Hello, welcome to EverydayHDR.com. My name is Blake Rudis, and today I want to talk about the adjustment brush in Adobe Camera Raw. Um, now, before we go into this too much, I want to show you how you can open up a TIFF image in Photoshop. I've showed this many times in many other tutorials, but if this is your first time watching, what you want to do is go to Edit, Preferences, and then go to Camera Raw. This is in Photoshop CS6. Now, down under JPEG and TIFF handling, go to automatically open all supported TIFFs. Now, when you process a photo in uh, Photomatix Pro, you can then save it as a 16-bit TIFF and open it up and it'll come right into Photoshop CS6. So, I want to look at this barn picture that I took recently here. Now, you notice as soon as I double-click this TIFF, it says it's a TIFF down here. The minute I opened it up, popped right up here in Adobe Camera Raw. Now, I processed this in Photomatix specifically for the clouds because it's exactly like the clouds looked as the sun was setting, uh, just after the sun was setting actually in that blue hour. It was it was this nice haze with a little bit of white beams coming out, it was beautiful. But when I put the five exposures into Photomatix Pro, what I got was a nice blue sky and a not so nice red barn. That is a red barn in real life. It's a bright red, beaming red barn. Uh, I mean, they painted over even all the defects that could be in that barn. But it's shown up here as like a dull magenta. And a lot of that has to do with the way I processed it. But it's a nightmare when you try to process this photo in camera raw with the temperature slider. Because I want to bring out those blues a little bit more. So I want to drop that temperature slider a little bit more just to, to, to bring of that blue in this image and it's just not working right um, it, it makes the the barn look a little bit more magenta now if I drop the tint it doesn't really help if I increase it doesn't help just adds more magenta so the way to fix this is to do like a split uh, adjustment brush uh, I'm going to show you that in a second here I'm going to go through the rest of this get all the highlights right the shadows right where I want it to be and then I'm going to go into the adjustment brush and show you a cool little trick it's kind of like doing masking but right here in Adobe Camera Raw so you don't really have to go too far into Photoshop it's very similar in Lightroom uh, almost exactly the same actually so um, let's go ahead and, and look at my exposure here. If I press the Alt key, it'll show me all the areas that are basically blowing out. Uh, if I move it to the right um, to increase the exposure, it's blowing out all of that area in blue. Everything that you see here that's highlighted in blue, those are blow out. Those are areas that have been blown out in the um, in their respective color area. So in the cyans and blues, it started to blow out there, and so in the magenta or in the uh, greens as well. That's a little too blue for me though. I don't really like how blue that is. Uh, that's more about the way it looked that day. And still the cyans right here are blown out a little bit more. We can fix that in a second here. So contrast, we'll go ahead and increase some contrast a little bit. Get a little push and pull to left and right, see what I like. Highlights, same thing. Bring them down, bring them up, see where I like it. And I like it right about here. I kind of like that highlight peeking up behind the barn. Shadows, let's look at the shadows. Okay. Uh, I don't want to go too high in the shadows because there's some weird thing under the lip of the barn. So we'll go ahead and increase those just a little bit. Now you can press and hold the Alt key here too. And as you press and hold Alt, it's going to show you the areas that it's adding a lot of dark to. So those areas in the cyans right there are pretty much bl um, clipping in the shadows on those and that's in, in that respective color. Same with the whites. I'm going to hold Alt and see what happens with my whites. Still a little too much. Let's go out right there. That looks good. Blacks. This is how I do just about every image with that Alt or Option key. Sorry for those Mac users. Alt or Option is going to be the, the key that you want to use for that. And let's see about clarity. Bring it down, bring it down. Ooh, that's ugly. And that is just about right. Don't want to go too far with the clarity slider because we already did that basically with all the, the, all the adjustments in Photomatix Pro. So let's see what we have here. So we went from like a baseline. I, this is how I like my images to look straight out of Photomatix. Not too dark, not too light, just right and 16-bit TIFF so I can manipulate it a lot. So now we've got this nice blue sky, but the thing we don't have is a nice red barn. So you go into the adjustment brush, you can press K or you can go to the adjustment brush at the top of Adobe Lightroom. Now the way the adjustment brush looks, it brings up another set of panels over here and it's it's really kind of intimidating at first. It's basically going to store all of the past settings that were in there. Now if you want to erase them, the best thing to do is either press the plus or minus on any of these sliders. It will default it to a negative adjustment in that slider. 
So because we want this to be a little bit more red or warmer, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to hit the plus sign on the temperature. See, watch all these sliders as I do that. That's just setting up my brush. Now, we can scroll down to the bottom here and put auto mask on, which is what I want. It's going to automatically help me select the areas that I want. And then I'm going to go show mask to make it easier for me to pick what I want. Now, you can also increase and decrease the size of the brush by going over here. Um, I like to press the uh, right and left keys to make my brush a little bigger. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start selecting this barn. Now when I start selecting this barn, I want to make sure that as I'm drawing I don't go outside of the barn with the middle of the cursor. Now just shy on the edges just like that is okay because it'll still auto mask those areas but just don't go too far out. So let's go ahead and start painting this out. You can see it's already starting to make a mask. It's a red mask on a red barn so it's kind of hard to see what I'm selecting here but uh, you'll see the adjustment happening in a second. So I just want to stay right in the lines of that barn. Make sure I cover that whole barn with my uh, adjustment brush tool. All right, so I've got this whole barn covered. It's still showing me my mask down here. So go ahead and just go ahead and unclick show mask. I don't want to see my mask. I can keep the auto mask checked, but I don't want to show mask. If I wanted to change the color, I can go to the, uh, the little color that's right next to the mask and change that color. And for our sake, you know, putting it to something like white would probably help because it's on a red barn. Normally red is good because it's a nice bright color, but for this case, we probably want something else. All right, so um, I can take show mask off, and now I'm gonna increase the temperature of this to really try and make that barn more red. Now, if you notice, I can press the preview button and we've, we've gone from a magenta barn to more of a reddish barn and it's starting to work because we're adjusting the color temperatures on it so we can we can move the tint slider too if I move it more to the magenta side it's not really going to help me it's going to make the barn more magenta if I move the tint down to the green side it's going to take away some of that magenta by adding green there which in turn is giving me a more natural looking color and from here you can also increase the exposure, the contrast, highlights independently from the rest of the image, which can actually work in your favor with the clarity slider. Now I can adjust the clarity on just that barn, make it look a little bit more gringy, a little bit more grungy, I should say, a little bit more HDR feel to it if I wanted to. I really don't like how it looks that high, so I'll just keep that at like maybe plus two or plus three. I can increase the saturation as well. If I want to make that a really bright red, stark red barn, I could do that as well. But what I'm going to do is just drop that down, move it over, see where what I like and where I like it the best, and I think there is pr probably pretty good. Now what I'm noticing here is that I've lost a lot of green in my in in my uh, foreground. So now we fixed the red a little bit. We're going to go ahead and tweak that a little bit more. But I can add another uh, another control or no, not control point, another adjustment brush point. I'm going to show mask again, and I'm going to go ahead with the new uh, button selected. If you have add selected, it's going to add to this one that you have selected. If you click new, notice how it turns into a, a white, um, or I should say a gray uh, point that tells you that, and when you hover over it, it tells you this is the mask for this area. So we don't want to touch that. Now we want to cover up this green area here. So let's go ahead and paint this green area right there with all of the nice little pretty grass. And we're going to want to fix that grass. So again, take the show mask off. It's just on to help us for the time being. And let's go ahead and play with these settings here. It looked pretty good with the settings from before. We can click the preview on and off. Now we're, with this, we're, we're basically doing like a, a, a playing with the eye effect where our eye knows that there's one color temperature anywhere we look. And for this photo, that one color temperature is going to be the blue background because it's the most um, vibrant. Now. What we've done is we've tricked the eye now. We've changed the color temperature of the foreground independently from the color temperature of the background. Now, by doing that, it plays with the eye a little bit. And in, the, in, in our human brain, we're thinking, wow, this is an interesting photo. And I, I don't really even know why, other than the fact that it's a barn at sunset. You know, it's not that bad. But there's something else going on here that my brain just doesn't get. That's where you've, you've played with the viewer. You might even capture their attention for a little bit longer. Another thing that might help to capture their attention for a little longer is to crop this photo. Maybe uh, crop it so that it's got a lower uh, angle here. We'll do something like that. All right. 
So now what we can also do is go into the hue, uh, saturation, and luminosity slider here. So in the hue slider, I can change the hue of all the different colors in here independently. Um, you can change the hue of the greens, the hues of the reds. So I'm going to change the hue of the reds a little bit and see what I like. It's not really working out too well in any of those directions. Let's try oranges. Not, not so much either. Magenta. Okay, so now we can take those magenta areas, you can see right here, and make them a little bit more red to match that barn a little bit better. We can also change the saturation. That's the hue, where you're taking one color and changing its value to make it appear like another color. Or we can go to saturation, and you can increase the saturation in those areas as well. I don't like to increase my saturation too much. Um, I like to pretty much leave my saturation um, alone for the most part. And you can change the luminance of those colors, how uh, dark or how light that color is. So we can make that barn a little darker. It tends to get blown out a little bit in those areas. We can make it lighter, uh, so on and so forth. And you can do that independently with your colors independently. It's pretty nice. So there's also one thing in here that I might want to fix, and that's this road. This road uh, is supposed to be gravel and it doesn't look like gravel, it looks like hyper color blue. So I'm gonna go back to my adjustment brush, you can press K. I'm gonna make a new one. Now, I'm gonna make this a really small, much smaller brush, show my mask and paint on those areas and see if I can fix this up a little bit. I don't want these to be blue. And there's a couple over here too. Let's see if we can get those. Take that show mask off and let's see if we can change the color temperature in those. I think we've already done it as best we could. Let's reduce the saturation there. All right, now we've got a gravel road. Starting to appear like a gravel road again. All right, so now we can take our preview off and see what we've done in just the adjustment brush panel. Now, we can go uh, back to the basic menu. Um, clicking on the handle do it. Um, if we go into the basic menu, what we can do is press the preview key and see where we are here. This is where we started and this is where we've finished. So all of these adjustments have done been done right here in Adobe Camera Raw before I need, even need to go anywhere else. Oh, one thing I did want to fix was this hyper blue that I've got going on here. Remember I said I was going to fix that? Um, again, that can be fixed in the hue saturation. You just have to find the color. It's probably aqua. Yep, it's aqua. So we can look at the, the image as a whole and see all the aqua areas. It's not just cyan now, it's aqua. And I'm going to go ahead and reduce those pretty um, I can reduce the luminance in them to make them a little bit uh, lighter or darker, or like I showed before, we can go to the hue. We can take, take the aquas and make them a little bit more blue, which will blend them in a little bit more without having to blow out those areas too much with the uh, luminance slider. We could also reduce the saturation as well. So that was the uh, the main premise of this was to show you how to use the Adobe or the Adobe Camera Raw's adjustment brush in. Uh, right here in this interface. Now, we've gone over some other things too, like the hue saturation adjustment layer, uh, adjustment panel, which is awesome. You can, you can adjust things independently as far as the hue, the saturation, or the luminance. So we've covered quite a few topics here in this adjustment brush uh, tutorial. I hope this helps you. Uh, again, play with that eye a little bit. Take the viewer's eye and put it somewhere else. Change it up a little bit. Make them think that they're, they're looking at uh, one color temperature when they're really looking at two and you'll get the viewer captivated for just a little bit longer because something just isn't right here, but it looks great. So, hope this helped. Again, this is EverydayHDR.com and my name is Blake Rudis.